Okay, so I'm Philip Asari, and some of you have seen me or know me. I work in the design lab, okay? Some of you know what the design lab is, some of you don't. So the design lab is an initiative that um, helps people use the design thinking project, pro, uh, process to work on projects. So any project you are working on, as students, staff, faculty, they bring it to the design lab and we help them use the design thinking process to solve those problems. Okay. So um, some of you are doing FDE now, so you haven't gotten to the process yet, but that's what you guys will be doing for the semester, the design thinking process, and how you are using, you can use that to solve problems. So the DE lab has something we call the content series, DT content series, and what we do is we talk about the design thinking process and its application. So there's a talk, then there's an application on how we can use it to solve real, real problems. So it's just a few, t like 10 minutes or five minutes of talk, then the rest will be doing. So we'll be done in like 30 minutes. But today we have Cynthia. She's a second year student. She did FDE, like you. And today she's going to talk about design thinking and education. Okay, so design thinking and how we can apply it to education. Okay, so let's give her a hand. So today, I'm just going to do a presentation. It's a very short presentation about design thinking and education, just to introduce everything. So we have design thinking in class, right? But the question is, how do we apply this to real life? How do you take it? Because we will learn about problems, how to solve problems. But the question is, are we going to apply the solution to the real world problems, or are we going to just sit there? So design thinking comes into various, you know, like, topics. You can, you can do design thinking in education, design thinking in health, design thinking in environment. So it's just basically how do you apply design thinking into a certain field of study. You understand? So, um, so the question is, why is design thinking? Any ideas? What's design thinking? According to your own explanation, what do you think is design thinking? Why is design thinking? Harry. Um, design thinking is basically thinking outside the box, just a brand new problem and you're solving it for the first time ever. Yeah. Okay. Focus on developing student creative confidence. So in terms of, we've been taught, you know, like in school, you always get the right answer. One plus one is equal to two, right? But have you ever asked yourself, how is one plus one two? Or is it just because you were told that one plus one is two? So think about that. And I teach students or teachers to engage in hands-on challenges that focus on developing empathy, one thing. So this is where, it's like you're learning one thing, that one plus one is equal to two, right? And then you come, into the environment and think of how can I apply one plus one is equal to two. But it teaches them in a specific way in terms of you have to empathize. So empathy is like a key thing in design thinking. So it's looking at the end user. Let's say for example, I'm creating a solution on climate change, right? So if I am creating this solution, I'm creating it in the mind of the user. Who's gonna use my solution? Instead of saying that I am this big person who just a problem solver, I look, I put myself in the shoes of a user, and I say, yes, this person is going through this problem. How can I create a solution that will really, will really help them solve the problem? You understand? So um, next on we have the design thinking process. So design thinking process is mainly in five. Okay, let's say, yeah, six different things, different points, right? So we have the problem, right? 
and we want to go all the way to the solution. But before we think of the solution, we do research about the problem, right? This is where you dive deeper into the problem, get to understand. Let's say, for example, I have a problem in education. Let's say, for example, how do I solve a math question? How can I solve this a problem of, let's say, lack of education in street children, right? So I do research, a lot of research, and then from that I will analyze my research. So there are different analysis methods that you use, and then come to a point of view. So this is like a summary of your research. And then from that I ideate, create a prototype, and then the last I have a solution. So just to get a clear understanding of every, sorry. For example, I might do, I might do a research of how, let's say for example, how to solve my problems. Just a research question. Yes. Um, what are the effects of education on the rural environment? That's an educational project. So think of just one educational project. Just one. Just think about him and write it down. something that you're going to research about, you're going to learn about. So the first step of design thinking is research. So I have this big problem. I don't know where to start. I don't know what are the courses. I don't know what, are, what entails or what this whole thing that I've written or the project I've written entails, right? So I'm going to find information. So this is where you, so research is basically students and master themselves in learning. So you learn about the problem. You try to understand what are the causes of the problem that you have. Let's say, for example, you had lack of sleep, right? What causes lack of sleep? What are the effects of lack of sleep, right? So with the problem that you have, you have you're in a team of five, six, right? Try to identify some of the causes of the, project that, of, of the problem that you have, or effects. Anything concerning the problem that you have. So. Thank you. 
So guys, you can take up the right thing. Yeah, I'm going to show them. And I stick it up. Some of you can try something. So let's take a look at what you want to do. <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah, I think I think all this is really cool. Cause last semester I thought prototyping, yeah, and I feel like it's the best part of design thinking right now. Like right now, I, I'm like, if you don't do prototyping, then design thinking is so incomplete. And I didn't understand this when I was doing MDU. I mean, literally skipped prototyping my group and I. So, so yeah, it was a big problem when I had to present on it. But then teaching was the best way for me to learn. So yeah. the effects you can ever get. Get all the information you can ever get about that problem, right? Then you write all these ideas down and come together and try sort out. So let's say, for example, you are in a team of 10 people, right? Every single person has different ideas about the problem. So you try sort it into different categories. Let's say, for example, these are the causes of my problem. These are the effects of my problem. These are the results, right, of my problem. So that is called analyzing whatever research, whatever research information that you've gotten, right? And then from that, you come up with a point of view. So uh, this is, a point of view is like a summary of all whatever, all the research that you've done. So it's like you develop a sentence, right? About the problem, about everything that you've learned about the problem. So that's a point of view. So one thing that, just to go back a little bit. So in the point of view, you ask how much we, um, how much we question. So for example, if I'm dealing with the problem of, what was your problem? Poor education. Poor education system, right? So you might think of how much we improve the education system, right? So this, with this question, encourages you to think out of the box. How might we improve it? So different people will have different ideas of how to improve the education system, and that is called ideation, right? So you ideate, it's basically brainstorming. So I have a problem. How 
might be, how can I solve this? How can, what are some of the ideas that I have, right? And then with those ideas, you have now, this is where, for example, if, just to say one thing about this, quantity is encouraged. So you come up with a very, like, a very absurd idea. Let's say, for example, something that is very silly. <laughs> Let me say that. So you allow yourself to become foolish. You allow yourself to think out of the box. So I might give you something like paper. So give me 10 or 100 uses of this paper, right? So it's basically you thinking out of the box. You think of a thousand uses, anything you can ever think about, right? So this is called ideation. And then the next step is prototype. So in the ideation stage, you will come up with the main, let's say from all the solutions, all the ideas that you have, you may pick one or two ideas that you think are more viable. They can apply to the, they can be, let's say a solution or something. So from that, you develop a prototype. So let's say, for example, uh, my problem is poor education system. And I think to improve poor education system, I have to come up with an app, right? So here in the prototype is where you create a model of the app. Maybe my app is meant to have two buttons. So I'll create, I'll draw the model of my app, right? And put all the buttons, all everything that I need. Maybe my solution is to build a house, right? Or build a school. So I will come up with a model. I'll build something that represents my school. How many rooms do I want in the school? How many space do I, how much, oh no, how many students are coming to my school? So you think about those things. And then lastly, you have your solution. So you've now created a prototype, right? From the prototype, you get feedback. You ask people around. I think of this idea. I think of this solution. What do you think about? From that, now you create a solution. And in creating that solution, you need to test it. So you you go back and test, ask people, right? Then from the feedback you get, if you need to modify it, then you modify everything. So basically, design thinking is just going out of thinking out of the box, right? Apart from just knowing one plus one is, is equal to two, ask yourself, how is one plus one is equal to two? So when I'm presented with a problem, I basically try to understand the problem, go through research, create a point of view, ideate, prototype, and come up with a solution. Go over what she said, just a summary, okay? So, she spoke about the design thinking process. Okay. Now, the design thinking process, you can break it down into three main parts. Okay. It's user-centered, it has a systems perspective, and it's a way of thinking in a creative way. It's a creative thinking approach, kind of. So, it focuses more on your user, who you are designing your solution for, it looks at the problem from, I don't know whether you guys have done the helicopter, spy plane, those kind of stuff. Analyzing the problem from a broader perspective and now going deeper into the bull's eye. So like, going to specifics, okay? Now, as she spoke about very well, she spoke about the research. First, you have to start with research, the design thinking. Why do you think you have to start with research? Because you, you don't know you have to understand the problem, okay? And how do you understand the problem? By finding out, digging deeper into what the problem is about, as she said. Then when you do that, you go out, you get a lot of information. This is what someone said about the problem, blah, 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 blah. You bring it, then you come and analyze it. Now, you realize that we are not talking about SPSS and those, you know, things that you use to analyze, like Excel and stuff like that. We are talking about putting things in a way that you can actually visualize and see the patterns that are involved with the problem, as she said. So you categorize them into themes, you break them down, the things that are linked together, you put them together, and you form certain things to understand what the problem is. Now you've done your analysis, after that you come back, 
you have a point of view from the analysis that you did. So it's something that you say, hmm, this is what this person said. So this is really the problem. Okay. So after you ideate, you come up with so many solutions that you can use to solve that problem. Right? Then ideation, you can eliminate the worst ones as a group. You vote, say, no, I think this one is good, I think that one is good, based on the research you've done. Okay? Then after that, you come up with a, suit, a prototype, as you said. A prototype can be in a product form or in a service form. Okay? So some of you are going to form businesses out of your FDE problems you are solving. Now, you come up, some of you come up with a product, some of you come up with a service. The service can be a business where you sell something or a service where you know people come to you and you, they give you money for something, a service you are giving them. All right? Then, prototyping is more of testing. You have to test it because I said design thinking is more, is more user-centered. So, you are creating something for your user, not for yourself. So you have to test it with the user to find out what the user actually wants. It gives you feedback. Then you do as a, a solution or do something that the user really wants. So that's the whole design thinking process that she spoke about.